think of this reception? Well, um, I've never so many, seen so many people with TARDISes and screwdrivers uh, <laughs> all screaming at me at once. It reminds me of my own living room. It's... As your character that you play and that you write? Um, I think it's probably, that's probably <laughs> your question. What do you think? I love it. I love it. When and you go to conventions and you see people that have gone to so much effort and, and detail as well to get it right. I mean, even I've seen people walking around just as Osman Oswald with egg whisks. Does Clara have any doubt after seeing all the different interpretations of the doctor that he has always been a good man? That's a really interesting question. I, th I think... I don't think she does have any doubt. I think the Doctor is, is her hero. And it's, it's exactly like in, um, in Day of the Doctor, where sometimes he just needs reminding to be... And it's exactly what she says in that scene is, mm. be a doctor. What you do what you've always done, be a doctor. And I think, you know, this man who has lived for... This alien, should I say, who has lived for 2,000 years mm. um, and seen and been to so many dark places and experienced so much loss... I think, I think that's her job sometimes, just to nudge him, to remind him of, of everything that he is. Jenna, how do you feel about closing the cycle of the 11th Doctor and starting this new one? Something that only Billy Piper did in the new series of Doctor Who. Yeah, how exciting. I mean, I mean to have an actor such as Peter Capaldi come on set and, and be able to be by his side and watch him bring what he does and create this, this iconic Part as the 12th Doctor is, is, was incredible to watch and be by him, his side and, and see. And I think really wonderful for the storytelling as well, because just as you think you're safe and you think you've got this dynamic down and you think you know, you're a team and you know what's happening, suddenly it throws it all up in the air and you kind of have to start again and find, and find a new way. And that, is really, that change is really, really exciting for, for Clara, for the dynamic, for, for the show. I think it's, um, it, it's one of the wonderful things about Doctor Who. You're a lifelong fan of Doctor Who. Did that prepare you to take, a, to take over the TARDIS? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had studied through all of my life. <laughs> <laughs> From when I was a child, I grew up with the show. Unlike uh, uh, everyone here, I was a fan of the show. I just loved it. You had a really hard job last year deciding who was going to be the new Doctor. Why did you choose this face? Um... <laughs> I think I just wanted to meet him. Uh, no, it was, uh, it was actually, it wasn't, it wasn't a hard job because uh, it was sort of the first name that popped into my head. Just as I was thinking we're going to spend months doing this and it will be really anxious and difficult, I just thought of, of Peter and I thought, wouldn't that be amazing if Peter Capaldi was the doctor? Uh, I, I wonder if anyone's ever asked him if, it, if he's ever been approached because he seems like a fan <laughs> and he might just say yes. Um, and I, I asked my old friend Mark Gatiss uh, to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, to, to give me a list of who he thought should be the doctor. Um, and I didn't say what I was thinking at all. He gave me a list, and the, the name right at the top was Peter. So, uh, and then when I ventured at the BBC, everyone was just really keen. How have you um, adapted as Clara and as an actor to work with the 12th Doctor and with Peter? Well, for Clara, it's been, I think it's been really difficult. It's, it becomes in, it's, what's so wonderful is we haven't skirted over the regeneration. It's, um, it's really something that, that we explore the idea of what would you do if your best friend in the world changed their face? What was the hardest part of playing the doctor? Did you feel you had to live up to certain expectations and standards? What were they? 
hard part. <laughs> That's a hard part. <laughs> um, no, you feel a great responsibility because you know that the, 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 the doctor has this love and all these people, all you people. Uh, <laughs> who mustn't be disappointed, who must be looked after. Um, and I think that when you take on the role of the doctor, you are a, it's your job to be the caretaker, you know. I'm the janitor of the doctor. I look after, <laughs> I look after him until the next person comes along. Um, the hardest thing, I think, and I think Jenna might uh, agree or not, is that the doctor has to be, and, 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 and it's the same with Clara, um, they have to be funny one moment, sad the next moment, frightened the next, uh, 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 excited the next, sometimes in the, in the space of a whole sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so to do all of those things uh, very quickly and efficiently is... I think it's quite a challenge for an actor. I mean, I find that quite challenging. But it is the most wonderful role in the world. It is said that Peter Capaldi will be a darker, more mysterious doctor. Does this mean that he will, we will be seeing more action in the series or that we will get to know the dark side of the doctor? Um, I think the doctor's always been quite dark. It's how much he lets you see that. He's not hiding as much. He's not, he's not putting up as much of a front. He's letting you see him a bit more, I would say. He's not. I think he's sort of, the, I think the, the word that keeps coming to mind is sort of unrepentant. You know, for me, what it, the, the really exciting moments in Doctor Who is when it uh, touches its past and then it grabs you and turns you and, and points you into the future. You were telling us in the press conference that you wanted to bring back the name Doctor Misterio. Sí. Yo soy Doctor Misterio. <laughs> uh, I've been so impressed by the warmth of the people in Mexico. Uh, it's a very special. Uh, you, you, you perhaps don't know this, uh, but you, 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 all of the, the people that I've met here, the Mexican people, have sent out such vibes of welcome and kindness and geniality and courtesy. And that's a, a beautiful thing to have in the world. So thank you. Peter, since the beginning of this tour, you've said that you wanted to know why the fans love Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. And you've asked in the different cities. What have been your findings so far? Um, well, I was, you very cleverly turned this back to me. The reason I was doing that was that people kept <laughs> saying to me, What's, why is Doctor Who successful? Well, I, I didn't know the answer to that. So I would ask them, why did they think it was successful? And often people would say to me, it was uh, because, you know, maybe when I was, uh, uh, there was a time in my life when I was depressed and it made me happy, or there was a time when I was bullied and, or felt uh, outside and, and another, uh, and it made me feel welcome. Uh, and I think, Someone also said yesterday in Mexico that the doctor cared for everyone and that this was quite a rare thing in a hero that he actually in his heart uh, cared for anyone uh, despite their position, how rich they were, how poor they were, whatever, that he just cared uh, for good people. Um, also, I think that it is uh, escapism. You know, life in, often can be tough or boring, or dreary, and you know, the idea that there might be a police box, a TARDIS that can show up in your backyard, and that door will open, uh, and someone who looks like me will say, <laughs> would you like to come on an adventure? <laughs> in all of time and all of space. I think people like that. Put the cat down.